Hey everybody and welcome back to Algebra 2 Online. I just want to start today and do another one of these domain range function problems using a picture. So we will actually um, graph these kind of things soon. So this is called a piecewise function and we'll talk more about that next class. But um, for right now I just want to analyze the domain, the range, and talk about whether or not it's a function. So the domain Again, we're just kind of looking on the x-axis, and if you look at it, you can see, um, you know, this arrow means it's going to get all the x-values down there, and we've got a solid line there. This is a solid point. This open circle right here means that it's not defined right there, but right after it, um, you know, I'm thinking of like, we do this on number lines and things, we've seen that. It just continues and keeps going over. So really the domain of this one would be all reals. Every single x value shows up somewhere like in here, right? And the range um, is not the same because there's, you know, all sorts of y values down here that just don't show up in the, in the picture, in the graph, right? So the, you have to kind of calculate and look at the you know, these are the little tick marks in the grid are by two. So you have to see that this is halfway in between um, the first line and the second line. So this would be three. So every y value from three up shows up. So the range would just be all y is bigger than or equal uh, to three. And the function piece, again, is just, does it pass the vertical line test? So as you look um, on this graph, even right here, where it looks like it might fail, since that is open and that's closed, it doesn't double up. So you actually do um, pass the um, vertical line test. So it passes the vertical, whoops, vertical line test. Um, so it's a function. The new thing I want to talk about today is function notation. So this is another thing that's really um, comes out of some stuff you've seen in Algebra 1, but I realized you haven't used that in a while, and you're probably rusty, and we're going to use it a lot, so I want to make sure we take time to talk about it. Um, the basics of function notation are kind of given in this picture. I really think of it as like a machine, which is why I have this photo here. And the idea is like the input, typically we use x, but it could really be anything. So we're going to put something in to this function machine. This f is just the name of it, and it, the parentheses are there to say it's operating, this machine operates on this input. And so it does some stuff in here, and then it's going to pump out um, a y value or an output, right? And so if we take something like this, and we say f of x equals x cubed minus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1, and I want you to find f of negative 3, um, you just go and the x's all just become negative 3's. So you have negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1, and so that is negative 27 plus 6 plus 1, all over negative 2, and um, if you simplify that down, you get negative 18 over negative 2, or 9, and that's it. So 9 is acting you know, as one of these cubes over here, and the negative three was like your sphere here, and the machine is another, like, it's just name is F, and F operates on X here. Um, that's it. So you can do this without numbers, too. You could say, given X squared plus X minus one, what are these three different things? And really just follows the same rules. Um, the, you know, new input is x minus 10, or x plus 10. So everywhere I had an x up here, right, 
I just now plug in x plus 10. It's the new input in there. So this first one would just be like x plus 10 squared plus x plus 10 minus 1. And you could simplify it. Um, you could, I would always recommend, you know, when we square something, we need to multiply it by itself. So we're going to write it like that. Um, that just kind of reminds you, you'll have to double distribute it. Um, so we're going to get x squared plus uh, 20x plus 100. And then we're going to get another plus x plus 10 minus 1. And I'm kind of running out of room. Um, we're going to simplify that just a little more. We're going to say 21x's. And then we're going to get 109, if I did my math right. I think I did. Um, yeah. And that's it. Um, that would be, you know, f. We read this f of x plus 10. And all you do is you take x plus 10 and you plug it in. And then I didn't really say it, but it's a good practice just to simplify it to something like that. You can also multiply a function by something. So literally something like this would just become 10 times the function which is x squared plus x minus 1 and this one doesn't really need to be simplified because even if you multiply in the 10 you're just going to get um, that and really this is actually almost simpler than this one so i would take i would really take either of these i don't really care which one you do um, but you can do that. You can multiply a function by something. And the last kind of thing here, just adding to a function. So, you know, f of x is this x squared plus x minus 1. And then I have this plus 8, right? So if I add 8 to it, I would just basically change the number at the end. So I would just, instead of ending in a negative 1 with the function, I add 8 and I end in a 7. Um, and that would be it. And we will actually talk about, so these two are something we call function transformations. So the 10 is doing a very specific thing to this function. The plus 8 does something very specific to it. Um, one of the probably most important things that we talk about, honestly, the whole year of Algebra 2 is how those kind of um, transformations, how they change this graph of the original function. And we'll talk about that soon. So I just want to do another one of these kind of analyze a graph function problems. And this one's kind of weird. I want to explain a little bit of this one. So notice here, here, and here, you have an open circle. Um, this is something that I want to actually write down on here. So, um, let me put this. So, this is something called an asymptote. Um, and an asymptote is really, it's not part of the graph. So, when I do something with a dotted line like this, it's just there to kind of let you know that this blue part of the graph here, though, gets really, really, really close to the line, but it doesn't cross it. So there's lots of functions in the world that actually have these. We'll study a whole unit of rational functions, and they all have these things going on. But this graph gets really close, and it just doesn't cross um, that dotted line. That dotted line is just called an asymptote. So um, with all of that in mind, I just want to go through each of these questions. So if I wanted to use a picture to answer f of 1, this first thing, I would just look right here at 1, and I would just kind of go up until I hit the graph, and I would look at the output. That's what the, this question asks. Basically, what is the output? when the input is 1, and happens to also be 1. Um, you plug in 1, you get 1 out. I'm going to erase that just so it doesn't get too crowded. Um, number 2 here is sort of asking the opposite. Number 2 says, if the output is 2, what is the input? 
So the output of 2 is right here, right, y value of 2. And then we want to know what x gives you that. So it actually would be wrong to just say something like x equals 0. And it's only wrong because it's not fully right. Um, there are technically two more spots where you get a output of 2. Um, and the other ones would be at negative 2 and at uh, negative, I got to count over here, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can see if I kind of imagine a horizontal line there, I would go through 2 here, here, and here. I don't get it here because it's an open circle. So you only would get it here, here, and here. And the third question is this thing a function? So it's just a function if it passes the vertical line test. And, you know, when I look at it, I kind of see a little weird thing here and a weird thing here. And I would maybe be worried that it would fail the vertical line test there, but you have these open circles, so it's going to pass. You're going to be able to draw a vertical line and, um, only ever hit one spot on this. So, yes, it is. So number four, a um, lot like number one, I just want to know what the output is when you plug in negative three. And negative three is over here, right? And this is just making sure you understand the difference between these two kind of, um, like the difference between an open circle and a closed circle. So over at negative 3, you, the output is not here because it's open. The output's going to be down here. So when you plug in negative 3 to this function, you would definitely just get negative 1 as the output. And this last question, a um, lot of times when I do this question, students um, give me a wrong answer on this one. This one's kind of tricky. So the question I'm trying to ask here is, would you describe this thing as 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 or 3 to 2 or whatever? Um, I, will, I definitely recommend you stop and think about it. This is kind of an important concept question. Um, and the tricky part is that it's actually one of those weird ones. So over here the graph gets like horizontal. So if you have a horizontal line, if you remember from last time, and this arrow means it just goes on and on and on forever. So you get all these different input values over here going to the output value of zero. And there are technically, like even if it was just horizontal for a moment, like in between the little region where I'm going back and forth, there's still an infinite amount of numbers. So it doesn't matter how long it's horizontal for. If you have a graph that's horizontal, then automatically you're going to get one of those infinite to one relationships. Um, I mean, here it's actually an infinite to one uh, function relationship. But that last part can be kind of weird. So um, all because of this part right here. As soon as it's horizontal, it's infinite to one. So this is the last question I want to do. And you might notice some of these questions um, if you ever were part of Math Counts. So I've taught a Math Counts course in the past, and they got some really good questions. Um, and this is one that's just related to function. So I thought it would make sense to kind of talk about this here. Um, definitely kind of a weird question. Let me break this down. So this is saying that if f of x plus 1 minus x is 1. That's, if you have that, then find the value of this. <laughs> and the dot, dot, dot just means this pattern continues. So um, 2 over 2017, the next thing is going to be 3 over 2017, and then 4 over 2017, and so on, and so on, and so on. And I'm going to stop. I want to make sure I give you a chance to think about it because this one's kind of fun. So pause the video, see if you can figure out what the value of this would be.
All right, so hopefully you paused and have an answer. Um, the way I think about this one, I'm gonna take um, this to be x, and I'm gonna just see what one minus x would be. So if that was x, okay, I'm gonna kinda make that x, put that in quotes right there. Um, one minus one over 2017, um, you'd have to get a common denominator, right? So you get 2017 over 2017 is a 1. And then, whoops, um, minus 1 over 2017. That's going to be 2016, right, over 2017. And so what I want you to notice is it's saying if you take f of something and then add to it f of 1 minus that something, right, you get 1. So basically we have this part kind of matching up with like f of x. Then over here, right, we have matching up with um, f of one minus x. So we know that the first and the last thing in this series um, is gonna equal a one, right? So the way I kind of see this is we get a one, that's like current value, right? But we also know that, like, this pattern just continues. So there's, like, a 2, and then right in here, there would have been a F of 2015, whoops, um, over 2017. And those two would also, like, this one and this one would also give you a 1. And so the question kind of becomes how many pairs of function um, terms do we have basically, right? And so really the way you can just solve this in the end is take the, you know, however many things you're adding and just chop it in half because they come in pairs, right? This pair, this pair, and then there would have been another one there and so on and so on. So the, you know, the, the number, right? Oops the number right here, 2016, is how many total terms we have. So we just got to take 2016 divided by 2, and that is 1,008. And that's basically how many uh, ones we have, right? So we just add together 1 1,008 times, and that would equal the value of this whole big, messy, weird thing. Um, so that was actually a math counts problem from 2017. And um, a lot of times math count problems put the year in. So I think this was a 2017 problem. Um, but that's just a good function problem that I thought um, you all should see.